we've got formulas for series circuits, we've got formulas for parallel circuits, but what on earth are we to do with something that looks like this? It's neither one nor the other. This is a combination circuit, and it's the kind that's most common in the real world. What are we to do with this monstrous critter? Our goal for today is to lock it in the dungeon, to lock it in a black box, never to see the light of day again, to simplify, 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 until all we have left is either pure series or pure parallel, and follows our formulas nicely. Simplify, simplify, simplify. What are we to do with a nasty wheat stone bridge like this? Well, in the first place, every circuit we've ever drawn up till now has been built of rectangles rather than triangles. So let's take this wire and stretch it this way, and take this wire and stretch it that way, and take this wire and turn it 90 degrees. Ooh, alligator clip got loose. I clipped it back again. Now our circuit looks like this. There. That's better, isn't it? Or at least it looks like something we've done before. Could you stuff this into a formula that you have and come out with an answer, say for total resistance? No? Series? Parallel? Ah, the six in the middle ruins everything. What if we simplified it to make it look like this? Now! Can you deal with this? Do you have formulas? Can you use Ohm's Law? Yes? Good? All right. Here's our mission. To simplify every combination circuit we see with these nice little black boxes until it looks like this. Check it out. We don't know what's inside this black box. It's black. It's made of plastic. We can't see into it. All we know is that it has a total resistance of 7.2 ohms. Do we need to see into the interior? Nope. All, if we know that it has a resistance of 7.2 ohms, that's all the information we need to know. Our goal is to figure out whether the whole thing is going to end up as a series or a parallel circuit. If we can see that something is in series with something else, then simplify the parallel bits, lock them up in black boxes, get rid of them, close the box, nail the top down, and we'll get a series circuit. If what's in front of us looks like it's going to be a parallel circuit, then we're going to take every series we see, again, lock it up, put it in a black box, nail the top down, and we'll get a parallel circuit. Let's try it. Here's our black box method. This here, the 12 and the 18, looks very promising. I don't know what's going on in the rest of the circuit, but this 12 and this 18 are definitely in parallel. We can put them in a box. And hey, what will work for this box, 12 and 18 in parallel, will work for this box as well, 12 and 18, still in parallel. Let's see, total resistance, 12 plus 18. Oh, wait, no, that's a series. The 12 and the 18 are not in series, they're in parallel. 12 and 18 in parallel. Formula, formula, calculator, calculator. Don't forget those reciprocals. Should give us 7.2 ohms. Check. Is that less than the smallest resistor, but not ridiculously else? Well, yes, it is. So we're going to redraw this whole circuit. The redrawing is not optional. The tree is already dead. The notebook paper is printed. Cover it with diagrams. You're going to need them. Redraw the whole circuit. 10 volts of battery voltage. One black box here. One black box box here, and the six in the middle. Go on, redraw. When you're done redrawing and copying everything, unpause the video and find the total resistance. There it is. Series circuit. That wasn't so bad. Add them up. Get 20.4 ohms. Marvelous. Find the total current. 10 volts, 20.4 ohms. When you're done, round to one sig fig. You should get a halfway decent answer of about 0.5 amps. There. Finished. The current in this circuit here is about 0.5 amps. 0.5 amps leaves the battery on this side, goes into the top box, through the 6 ohm resistor in the middle, into the bottom box, and comes back around to the negative end of the battery. Let's try another one. This switch is now open. Open, we have as simple a series circuit as ever was. 200 ohms here, 150 there, 37.2 here. Nice series all the way around in a loop. However, if we close the switch, then there's going to be trouble. This is series. This is series. This is going to be parallel. That's a combination circuit if ever I saw it. So let's close the switch and see what's going to happen. When working with complicated combination circuits, it's generally the best idea to start as 
far away from the voltage source or the battery as possible. Don't start here. Here is going to be the end rather than the beginning. The 237.2 will be nice when it's time to simplify. We're not there yet. In this case, start all the way on the right, as far away from the AC source as powerful. Look, what's this? Forget about everything on the left. These two on the right, are they in series with each other or in parallel? Check. If you go through the top one, do you have to go through the bottom one as well? If so, if there's no choice, that's a series. Box it up. What's the total resistance inside this box? Can you do it in your head? Good. Two resistors in series, 455 ohms. Now redraw the whole circuit, close the switch, kill the tree, use the pencil graphite, draw and draw and draw until there's nothing left on this side but a black box with 455 ohms of resistance. When you're done drawing, unpause the video and look for the next black box. All right, go straight out here, we hit a resistor. Go straight out there, we hit a resistor. That's a series being born. General rule of thumb, start at the voltage source and go. If the first thing you hit is a resistor of any kind, then your final answer is going to be a series circuit. I'll say that again so you can write it down. Start at the voltage source and follow the wire. If the first thing you hit is a circuit element, like a resistor, that's going to be in series. If you leave the voltage source and the first thing you hit is a junction, a T-shape where you have to make a choice, then in the end you're going to be working towards a parallel circuit. So here we are. Where are we going to put our next black box? Again, stay over here on the right. Leave the 200 and the 37.2 for now. What do you see here? How are the 150 and the 455 related? Are they in series? If you go through the 150, do you have to go through the 455? No. Are they in parallel? Good. Find the resistance in this box in parallel. Can you do it in your head? No. Your final answer should be less than 150 ohms. So if the bell rings and a lot of students come in and you get 462.8, as some physics teachers did, stop, check your math. If you get something less than 150 ohms, but not too much less, then you're on the right track. Again, redraw the circuit for the third time. This is not optional. You will need this picture. Make it nice and big because we're going to cover it with algebra. Redraw the black box on the right-hand side of the circuit with 112.8 ohms of resistance and nothing else. Now, is this a circuit we can work with? When you're done redrawing, pause the video, find the total resistance in this simplified circuit down here, and find the total current. Total resistance you can almost do in your head, add up the total. Total current you definitely can't do in your head. Take your 117 volts, divide them by your 350 ohms of total resistance, and you should get 0.334 amps. That means in this simplified circuit down here, 334 milliamps runs through the whole circuit. And that means in the re regular circuit up here, the reasonable circuit, the combination circuit, 334 milliamps runs out of the AC source and splits off thereafter. It's not true that all 334 milliamps go through the 150. Some of them go through the 150 and some of them go around through the 225. And if you've gone through the 225, you will have to go through the 230 thereafter. The two branch currents will meet up and form a grand total of 334 three, milliamps coming back around to the voltage source. How much current spritz into each branch? Let's find out. To find out, we will have to work on this circuit down here, the simplified circuit, the one that we can understand because it's a pure series circuit. We know that 0.334 amps are going through the 200 ohm resistor and into the black box. Our next step is to find out how much voltage this black box uses. Well, that shouldn't be too bad. V box equals I box R box. We know R box. 
We know the current, the total current that's flowing in and out. That'll give us a voltage drop of 37.7 volts. So about 38 volts out of the 117 are used in the black box. This is unsurprising because most of it is probably being used to power the 200, and very little of it is used to power the 37.2. This box here, the one that came previously, this box here is a parallel circuit. That means 37.7 volts are used on this branch, and the same 37.7 volts are used on this branch. Look, they're not the same voltage as the power source, but they are the same voltage as each other because they're in parallel with each other. This means we can find the current in this branch. The current through the 1 hip 50 ohm resistor equals the voltage drop over the 1 hip 50 ohm resistor. That's the same voltage drop as the one in the box because this box was designed to contain a parallel segment of a circuit divided by the resistance. That's 150 ohms. Figure it out. Unpause when you're ready. The rest of the current that you found will go here through the 455, through the black box, and out the other side. How much will that be? Well, you had 0.334 amps total. See how much is left over after you found the current in the 150. Give it a try. Unpause when you're ready. If you took a voltage drop of 37.7 volts and a resistance of 150 ohms and found 0.251 amps of current, you did it right. If you took a voltage drop of 37.7 volts, divided it by 455 ohms, you'd get the same thing as the people who subtracted did, 82.6 milliamps, about 0.083-ish. So we know the current in the left branch. We know the current on the right branch. We know the voltage used in the 150 ohm resistor. Now we can go back to our original drawing and check in with the last two resistors, the ones we still don't know anything about. Well, that's, I guess, suppose that's a little bit harsh. We know the current going into the 225. Look, it's 0.0826 amps. We know the current coming out of the 230. Look, it's the same 0.0826 amps. And if we know the current and we know the resistance of each one, we can find the voltage drops. The voltage drop here is the current times the resistance. Find it, see if it makes sense. Well, 19 volts out of a grand total of 37.7 are now used here in the bottom resistor. How many are used in the top resistor? Take your 37.7 volts, Subtract your 19 and finish the problem. We now know the current everywhere in this new circuit. We know the voltage use in every element in this new circuit. There's nothing we can't figure out about a parallel circuit if we work it in this sequence. Our goal is to simplify, 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 and work the simplified diagrams as far as we can work them to give us information about the unsimplified diagram. To do every time you're fi faced with a combination circuit. First and foremost, redraw it, redraw it, redraw it, black box, simplify, redraw, black box, simplify, redraw, until you've got a pure series or pure parallel circuit, whereupon you can find the total resistance. Then you can find the total current, even if the problem doesn't ask for it. You'll need it for something, I guarantee it. Find the total current. Having found the total current, work on your simplified diagram, find the voltage drops in any of the relevant black boxes. Go to the next most simplified diagram and find the voltage drops on individual elements. If you know the voltage drops, then you can find the branch currents. Alternatively, if you're working on a series, you can find the branch currents first and then find the individual voltage drops. At this point, you can do any calculation in any order to get what the problem is asking for. You will then know everything there is to know about a combination circuit and be ready to build one.